All right, let's talk about um, let's talk about balance console a bit, shall we? So, uh, if you haven't seen, Lirio and I released our balance console recommendations uh, on Friday evening, and we uh, have I have a link in my chat exclamation balance, which links to Twitter post, and in that Twitter post, it links to the Reddit post with more explanations on that Lirio um, wrote up about our thought process and how we approached this balance council and why we chose the card that we chose. And then um, Lirio and I are also, we, like last month, we're doing a thing where we like, we're alternating our three star and our two star options as well as, um, and then our one star options are gonna be the same that are usually supporting another another vote from one of the other Russian or Chinese influencers that we like. So for power increase, it's Procession of Penance, which Metallic Danny's got. It's, uh, for power decrease, it's Doom Viandra, with which China has in their fourth op fourth slot. Provision increase is Griffin Witcher Adept, which Necrotal has in his one star slot. And then Power provision decrease. We don't have a supporting one because we didn't really love any of the other uh, one star choices. We talked about maybe supporting Forest Protector, but Forest Protector is a two star for China, and China's two stars like almost always go through. Um, yeah. So this is our list. We're looking to buff um, this Meave and our Swarm archetype, which we started with last month with uh, Anna Stranger power buff. <clears throat> This month, we're putting power increase on Radovid's Royal Guard, which has Inspired, uh, which has good synergy with, like, Carrick Frigate because it's got a crew, it's proactive, it helps protect the Frigate, it helps protect or re-enable Inspired on your Inspired cards, and Inspired has a really big interaction and, and synergy with Meave. And I think Meave is actually a sleeper card. Meave is really, really good if you can play her in between two Inspired units and have her... Um, have her ability proc as soon as on the same turn that she she is played. If you play her in between two inspired units, her timer initial timer goes from three to one, and it immediately activates on, after the turn that she's played. But the problem right now is all the inspired cards suck. In the game, most of these inspired cards are really really bad. Um, you've got Anseus, which is okay. Black Rail is okay. But then, like, other than that, a lot of these are bad, and that's why we buffed Anna Stranger and Radovid's Royal Guard and try to get a little bit more. Now we've got, you know, this card is a filler card that can you can just play a two of, and an opponent, if they don't remove it, or you could even play it, like, front row for Zeal and give them no incentive to remove it, and then that helps get the Queen Meave. Um, and you can play, like, Anseus, Rayla, maybe a Dandelion... Uh, maybe a Priscilla if you're playing like Demavend or something. And then Anna Stranger is like, I don't know, she's still kind of on the weaker side, I think, at 5 power. But it might be worth it to help with the Meave. I don't think you play all of these, but you're getting closer to getting a decent Meave deck. Do I have to put the votes in the same order? No, Orsakhan, you don't. Um, I think most most voters will probably look at the options and then choose the ones that they like or maybe reorder them i don't i don't necessarily expect any all of you guys to like follow the exact thing and copy paste the exact thing these are just like more like suggestions and because balance council is like a democratic thing uh only the top 10 votes in each category are going to get through so it doesn't really benefit you as a as an individual to go voting your own random cards that you like if nobody else is voting for them, right? Like you're just gonna throw away your vote and it's not gonna get through. So I would recommend looking at the proven groups that have been able to get votes through in the past, which is me and Lirio for the English speaking community, Necrotal for the Russian speaking community, and then Metallic Danny for Russian community, as well as the Chinese coalition. Those are the four big groups that are active right now that are consistently getting their votes through or part of their votes through every season and look at those lists and see which ones you like and, and then like vote accordingly. <clears throat> um, you and Lira are blessing this community. Thanks, Orscon. 
Uh, okay, so yeah, this is um, Radovid's Royal Guard and Carrick Frigate were very popular in our uh, poll as well that we conducted a couple weeks ago. Procession of Penance is something that we wanted to give Syndicate some buffs to counteract the nerfs that this Vice archetype is surely going to get. Uh, and we wanted to buff something that wouldn't be played in a mid range sort of deck and encouraging, like, um, encouraging Fire Sworn Swarm. Uh, Procession of Penance also kind of helps Alzer a little bit with giving him a better like high roll target since it's six provisions, and um, I think the other communities are also looking to buff Congregate Leader, which also would help this you know pure Fire Swarm archetype. <clears throat> uh, power decrease. We've got Dwim Viandra, which I talked about, which is I think Dwim Viandra is a card that I pretty high priority for us in terms of nerfing power. It's also very popular among the community. The reason it's only at one star is because China already has Dwim Viandra in their fourth slot suggestion. Uh, so we think that even at one star, it should go through. And then Corruptive Flaminica and Simless are our other two options. Corruptive Flaminica um, is just a card that like, it's not seeing a ton of play right now, but it's also a card that has ridiculously high ceiling and it's kind of, it can feel very frustrating to play against when there's two of them in a game where they play Corruptive Flaminica and then Facusia Corruptive Flaminica. Um, and so lowering the power is going to at least lower it, how much point slam it gets, right? And then we can look into buffing maybe other beasts like Beastmaster or was it Bearmaster? I think it's Bearmaster and like other beasts in Skellige. Uh Simless. Simless were power decreasing um, because the... Scoia'tael's getting a ton of buffs this season. Scoia'tael and Skellige are getting the most buffs this season. Scoia'tael's expected to get Bountiful Harvest, Forest Protector, Zoltan Chive, Water of Broccolon, <clears throat> maybe Munro Bruis, <clears throat> maybe even Dorvan Chariot, as Dorvan Chariot is one of China's fourth options I, uh, for power increase. Lear and I really hope that Dorvan Chariot buff doesn't go through, because at three power, Dorvan Chariot's like auto-include in, in Scoia'tael, and, and it's already seeing a lot of play at two power. Right with any any deck that's playing like the Simless Armors Workshop package or um, even just like mid range, even like Precision Strike Renfri decks, they're playing um, the Dorbin Chariot at two power already. So this is kind of uh, I wouldn't say Simless needs a buff right now if we're just looking at this season, but this is kind of our votes are often taking into account what are the expected changes from the rest of the community this season, this upcoming season, and. Since Scoia'tael is getting like six different buffs, I think Simless is, is a decent target to, to power decrease here. Why do they keep buffing good cards? Because, I mean, China's process is a pretty democratic one. And so they just, they just not like get the nominations and then throw it out there in a poll and whichever one gets the most votes just makes it into their recommendation. Like, I feel like they would do a better job or better service to to the whole balance council idea if the um, the people running the Chinese and organizing the Chinese balance council would make it a little bit more of their input themselves or like have a little bit more discretion to kind of like veto or change some things and not just necessarily follow the exact democratic results which is kind of what like Lyra and I are, are doing, right? Like, we took a poll, but we did, we said clearly in our poll that we're not going to just take the top three results and throw them in our balance council. We're going to consider a lot of different things to, as there's a lot of nuance when it comes to balance council, and we have to consider, like, what other people are voting for, which factions are getting buffs, which factions are getting nerfs, how many, right? Like, how how do we avoid over-buffing or over-nerfing things and avoiding reverts in the future? Hey, Henri Renua, thank you so much for the raid, by the way. I see you. Appreciate it. I hope you had a great stream. Um, and then provision increase. So Syndicate, one of the strongest, if not the strongest decks in the game right now, Syndicate Vice. We're nerfing Candle. Um, this is a revert. We'd like to avoid reverts, but I think Candle is still um, a good choice here. We were thinking about nerfing both Candle and Novigrad, but uh, Necrotal is nerfing Acherontia by provision, so we're going to just take one. We're going to put one nerf on the Candle and not change Novigrad for now. 
Um, I, I do think the deck's still going to be really strong. If it's only going to be two provision nerfs to Candle and Acherontia, I think the deck, Vice is still going to be really strong. I think Collusion's still going to be really strong, and Bounty's still going to be good. Uh, so I don't think, like, Syndicate's going to take that much of a hit, right? Because last season, Syndicate got seven to nine buffs in one season. Seven to nine buffs to the to a standard Vice deck with, like, Bare Knuckle Brawler, with Counter's Candle, uh, Bank, uh, Mareels, and Shady Vendors, and also uh, the Blacksmiths. Um, so I think Syndicate will still be fine. And we'll have to see how, how they perform next season. And like I said, we want to give like some encouragement to play some other like non mid rangey Syndicate decks. All right, Fall Test. Fall Test Prevent Increase. I haven't seen that many commandos where I am. I think they're maybe a little bit more prevalent in regular rank. But I do think Fault Test like is a just just a very, very toxic card. Um Answer or lose with a ton of carryover component. Always played behind Defender. And this card is like this card is like six points a turn on the round that it's played. And another five to ten points of no, and another like eight to eight to thirteen points of carryover for every turn that it stays alive. It's so strong that Commando's general game plan, ideal game plan, is to just go down to four cards in round one, no matter what the opponent does, no matter what the opponent's playing, no matter what the opponent's does, no matter what coin you're on. Like, if Foltest doesn't get answered, you just play down to four cards, even if they pass at seven, even if you're already ahead, because it just generates so much carryover. Uh, and we're hoping that maybe at one day we can nerf Foltest enough or nerf Defender enough that, like, we could have Commandos not at a super weak spot, but without wanting to play Foltest in this, like, answer or lose round one situation. Might take a while to get there. Um, China's also nerfing commandos to six provisions, which I think is a better nerf. Keep it at five power, nerf it to six provisions, then then um, nerf it back down to four power. What are you being about Caesar, Bob? Caesar Bilzen? This guy? Okay. It's like a buff for jackpot decks, right? It's okay. Jackpot's not really seeing much play now. I think this is a better... It's better to buff this card than to buff the Jackpot leader, for sure. Um, But yeah, it's not really like a high priority because it, it is still a mid-range card, right? Caesar, you just play this card with uh, Siggy and it's a mid-range card, but you just need the Jackpot to be a leader. It's like Jackpot... Uh, What's his face? Yago, Jackpot, Yago, DJ, Caesar. I mean, it's it's just okay. Not super interesting. <clears throat> Griffin Witcher Adept. It's another one of these cases we're nerfing Griffin Witcher Adept in provisions because we don't want it to go. I think that if we didn't do anything with Griffin Witcher Adept, I think it's likely that the casual community might try to nerf Griffin Witcher Adept back to four power which is what we saw happen once already. This card is very strong at five power, but it also takes, there's not that many effective ways of spawning these Witcher uh, students in NR. You have selective mutation, you have Keldar's your number one way, but Keldar can get answered. And then you've got selective mutation and two target practices. Like this card is hard to answer, but it also has uh, limited synergies. And it's just not worth ever playing at four provisions, even or sorry, at four power. Even at five power, there are there are a handful of Witcher NR decks that just don't play this card. They would rather play Musicians of Blaviken, Golden Necker instead. So I think like this card we could nerf to five provisions, and it would be fine. I don't even know if this necessarily is um, super huge. Are super super OP that it requires a nerf, but I think it's fine to nerf it to five P 
to prevent it from being nerfed to 4 power. Like, it, the, yeah. If we don't nerf it to 5p, it's going to get nerfed to 4 power. Is because we've already seen that happen, right? And Witchers, NR Witchers have been more popular and winning more than they did the last time Adept was 5p or 5 power. So I think it's even more likely that it'll just get reverted if we don't do anything. It's a nerf to Epidemic. Yeah, it is. And now, like, I don't know. Maybe maybe Shieldwall, Golden Necker, Witchers will actually be happier by being able to play this card at 5p without messing up the Blaviken? I don't think so, though. Because... You can't play target practices, and if you can't play target practices, you don't really want to. You don't really want to run this card without target practice. Would you actually play this for just Keldar and selective mutation? Probably not, right? Maybe as a one of, and then like care Seren, so that you have an option to get a second one. Okay, provision decrease. Uh, in our poll, Alzer was super popular for provision decrease, and I also think that like I have a per I personally have a soft spot for Alzer. Um, I don't want this card or its archetype to become super competitive and then just like high rolling uh, and like a lot of RNG. But I do think that one provision buff is not going to make it super competitive. It's just going to be like a little bit more viable if people want to tr have some fun and play some Alzer. It's a it's an entire archetype in its own. Which is what I like. It's like you just buff one card and you're encouraging people to try out an entirely new archetype. Um, I'll definitely, I'll definitely have some fun trying out Alzer next month to see how he is. He's gonna be ten provisions, and um, Bountiful Harvest is also gonna be cheaper. I'm not sure if you really play Bountiful Harvest with Alzer though, because you don't have that many slots. You gotta play spells. Bountiful Harvest is not spells. And then we've got, uh, hold on one sec. Okay, and then we've got uh, Olaf and Sarah's Fearless. So, um, Lyria really likes the idea of Golden Necker Red Self Wound. So that's the idea behind buffing Sarah's and Olaf down to nine provisions for both of them so that they can be fit into Golden Necker Self Wound decks. That want to go red, that can't, that won't play Sigvald. Sigvald's 10p. That won't play like Svalblob. So it's like a different variation of Self Wound and significantly different enough that, um, it, that we could consider it its own archetype. <clears throat> um, Sarasphere is definitely like a high skill ceiling card. Olaf is a card that hasn't seen a lot of play at all, uh, even though it's gone through multiple buffs. And we're also, Maybe getting buffs to Blue Boy Lugos, which would be a buff to this archetype. And Artist. I don't think Artist is really a buff to this archetype, though. Artist, even after the buff, would not fit into Golden Necker. And Artist is just a weird card. He's just a weird card. And he's so easily removed. What artifacts would Golden Necker self wound play? Uh, probably the Witcher one, right? Witcher one, maybe Megascope? Maybe? Megascope for, like, veterans or something. But the Witcher one is just good value. It has synergy with Self Wound, because you can play Quartermaster, you can heal. But yeah. Um, all of these cards did pretty well in our poll. They definitely weren't on the, weren't on the low end. And <clears throat> I want to quickly show what our expected changes are. So here's my Excel spreadsheet. <clears throat> this is the deck spreadsheet. Uh, and in the second tab of the deck spreadsheet, there's a tab called BC July. And this is kind of what it looks, what, what, the, what the vote map kind of looks like at this point, which it's pretty much finalized. I don't know if anybody is, is still gonna make any changes. Um, these are our votes here. In this column, this column is Necrotal's votes. And I've talked about already, like, the individual cards, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the individual cards. Um, but I think it's interesting to look at overall and have a big picture idea of what might happen. Right? There's 10 slots for each category. 
And with four groups, and each group having three slots in a category, that's, that's potentially 12 votes per category. And there's some overlap. So like the dark black squares are representing where uh, a, a card is being duplicated or overlapped between two different groups. So then you don't have to count the dark black squares. And so here we've got like, in the power increase area, we've got 11 cards plus the China's fourth vote, which is Dwarven Chariot, that's 12 cards, plus maybe like a casual vote for increasing sergeant power again. I don't know how many people are gonna try to do this, but I think there's like at least 12 cards vying for 10 slots in this um, power increase section. I'm hoping that Dwarven Chariot doesn't go through, and then I would expect maybe like Detlaf not to go through. I kind of think these two will not go through, and then we'll get these three, these two, these two, and these three. I feel like China has the most votes. I think like between like a one-star vote Detlaf from Necrotal or a one-star vote from China, I feel like China's going to get more, but I'm not. 100% sure. Um, and then power decrease. Power decrease has two overlaps, Udalric and Operator. So there's actually exactly 10 cards from the four uh, groups. And I don't know if there's going to be much of a casual impetus for power decrease. Maybe like Shady Vendor or Bare Knuckle Brawler. That could be something that casuals are looking to vote for. I'm not really sure because like Syndicate doesn't have a huge play rate especially in lower ranks. So I'm not sure how much like hatred or emotion there is from the casual voter for nerfing Syndicate. But if everything goes, I'm a little bit worried about this group because this category, because there's a lot of throwaway votes in this category. You've got Ethne is a throwaway vote because she's an evolving card. Power decrease is just going to only, only affect her first form. Living armor is a throwaway because it's always power equal to its armor. Iris von Everick kind of a throwaway because of um, most of the time you're going to be discarding her instead of playing her. And Udaric is like a throwaway as well because it's not really a nerf. It's not really a buff. It's just weird. I don't know if people are going to play Udaric. Um, This casual has much passion for nerfing SY? Okay. So maybe, maybe there will be. So like... The thing I'm the, the reason I think I say I'm worried about the power duties category is because in the past people have not the community has not been so passionate about like supporting these throwaway votes. I feel like your average voter wants to wants their vote to actually do something rather than just block something else from being voted. Because that's what these throwaway votes are designed to do, right? It's supposed to block the casual vote nerf for something like Shady Vendor or Bare Knuckle Brawler or whatever. Like, um, in previous months, it could have been, like, um, uh, a casual vote to nerf Dimmon Pirate, right? That got through two months ago when Pirates were really strong. And that was an over-nerf. <clears throat> um, so I think it might be possible that a casual vote might get through instead of, like, one of these two. But we'll see. Provision increase. We've got Conjurers. Um, we've got these three that I've talked about. Um, this is a buff to Enslave that's kind of controversial. Metallic Danny nerfing what he considers toxic decks with Cultists and Teleport. Whisperer. This is a temporary nerf to um, with a plan to buff it to four power after taking it to six provisions, which I support. I like that. Revenant is a nerf that I really like. Uh, I think people are going to be supporting this as well. Um, and then there's probably a casual... <laughs> there's probably a casual drive to nerf Slave Driver back to six provisions. So we've got kind of like, what, 12 cards competing for 10 slots? I'm not really sure what is not going to get through. If we had to choose two things to not get through, maybe it'll be Slave Driver and like Enslave? I think... I think people will probably be against Enslave being buffed. And I think some people will be against, like, because nobody's, no, none of the community is actually looking to nerf Slave Driver. Maybe, maybe nobody will actually, not enough votes will get through to this. And finally, provision decrease. Um, 
This category, Provision Decrease, has like 15 cards, probably, vying for 10 slots. There's no overlap between the four groups, so there's only there's 12 cards already, and then Water Brothlon's kind of fourth choice. This is going to have a lot of casual supporters, I feel like, because uh, it's in recent memory. Harmony got reverted. Everything got reverted last month from Harmony, and everybody's like, the consensus opinion is Water of Brocklon should not have gotten reverted, should be at nine provisions, while Saskia and Dried Fledgling should have gotten reverted. So I think this being a fourth China vote, plus a big casual vote, this will probably get through. And then casual voters will probably also be looking to buff Warriors a little bit, since they also got over-reverted last month. But I don't know if they're going to um, coalesce around War of Clans or Highland Warlord. <clears throat> Maybe both. Um, so yeah, I think there's going to be like... I think there's going to be at least two or three of these 12 cards in here that are not going to get through. But I'm not sure exactly which those will be. Yeah, hard to see. Hard to say. Waters will block your call of the forest. Yeah, well, there's going to be RNG again. If Waters goes to nine provisions without like something like Shaping Nature going down to eight, there's going to be RNG again at Philavandral nine. But yeah, that's like um, that's like a kind of a quick overview of what the Balance Council this time might look like. And then on this side, I had I had notes on things that we considered or maybe would consider in the future. Um, some of these cards got pretty high on our poll, but for one reason or another, we had, you know, debates and discussions on, on what was best, and they ended up not making it this time, but I do think they're very likely for uh, next month in terms of some of these options. Okay, and uh, yeah, just to just to reiterate, if you guys want to follow our suggestions, you can vote with us here. Um, but yeah, take a look at what everybody's voting for and feel free to make adjustments in terms of order and whatever. Good luck. This is bad. <laughs> this is bad for us. We don't have Axel. Hmm. My mulligan here. I feel like we gotta take a mulligan, but I don't know what. I think we mulligan. We mulligan Aguera. Oh, sick. Hmm. What is that? Golden Necker? Well, Bakabi knows the deck, right? Bakabi surely knows the deck. So I think we go Hafru's first. Because he's Reckless Flurry. I don't want to play into the Reckless Flurry too hard. And then he'll just like kill all of our crows with Reckless Flurry and then kill more crows and then we're going to be really, really sad. So I'm trying to establish some bodies before we do it. Oh god, though. <laughs> oh god, that's not good. That's really not good. That does another 3 damage and maybe more with the Ulula. So Bakabi is probably playing the Golden Necker Ulula deck <clears throat> that we have in our spreadsheet.
Then he has Junod. I maybe shouldn't have clicked everything, huh? <laughs> I did say this thing about how... Maybe I shouldn't have clicked one of them. But I didn't want to get Junauded. They were both like in really good Junaud range. But I ended up taking out Junaud at one point. Oh god, there's a Lemons in this deck. Or there could be a Lemons in this deck. Okay, this is different. Berserker? I didn't play Berserker. But maybe they're playing Berserker instead of like... some other card. And it's mostly the same deck though. <clears throat> okay, okay. Let's go... Um... Let's go this now. I'll probably try to do that before he kills my crows. Let's keep the fishies out. I'm gonna play Kelpie here and keep the fishies out. Play Rain in the range row. This is not an engine anymore. Okay, unicorns. That looks like the non Junod version. This gets me just enough points to stay ahead. We'll kill that so that, cause that's gonna probably grow. And we're gonna deny the Megascope target as well. Looks like the random pile you played today, nice. Um, horn time, right? Hopefully no Junon. We're ahead on even. Nice. Perfect. This is great. And we already have the, the perfect hand for the whole like uh, Axel round two setup. The question is, do they play a Lemons? I played a Lemons in my deck. There was only one different card so far, and that was Berserker. I guess we could keep the Heat Wave for the Lemons and then just hold this hand. And we have to, like... Um... Not ideal, but I think we'll hold it. Ideally, we would have had Decoction instead of Heat Wave, and then like Bride of the Sea instead of this Rhizome. And then we could Oniromancy for like second Megascope or Lock or something. But I don't want to take Mulligans here, it's gonna mess things up, I feel. Let me take Mulligans here. I can't Mulligan my only Alchemy. I don't want to Mulligan Megascope. I also don't want to Mulligan my only answer for the, the, the Lemons. I guess if we mulligan anything, we probably could mulligan Heat Wave. Lemons, hey stained. I once lopped off three heads with one toe. 
Okay, so... How about we... Heat wave this, because... Megascope. Because we don't want him to have a good Megascope. Okay, we need him not to kill our crows. Don't kill our baby crows, please. He should have a Sigrifa's right. Mm, there was a version that played it, and then I ended up cutting it, I think. I had two versions of this deck. My first version did not have unicorns, and now he has unicorns in his deck, so I think maybe he cut it. Oh. Okay, but he can't Megascope the Greatsword, he has to Megascope this. Well, the Necker is out, that's great. So like, what, what power does he have left? He has Axel and Quen, in terms of power. <clears throat> Not too much left, right? Well, that's still pretty good. can't pass anyways. Well, let's, might as well just keep bleeding. We're gonna have six crows. Not bad. Well, seven crows, right? Yeah, seven crows. Seven crows, all right. Who wants to take <clears throat> That's a really sad Hilmar. And uh, I guess we need to pass now. Can't play another card. But it's four card round three. He has no golden necker. He has a Quen. He has a Heron Kaduk. Maybe another Bear Witcher. I think we should be winning. Lock is. Mm, Lock is not useful, I don't think. I don't think he's gonna play another great sword. I think he cut the lemons for Freya. What do we want though in in the deck? We want Freya? We want second Freya, I guess? We have Oniro, we already have second Freya. Like what do we want? I think we just keep the lock. It's the most points. <clears throat> yeah, it's just the most points. Megascope is not that many points. Giga Scorpion decoction is not that many points. And Locke gives us like. Oh. There. And he doesn't even have megascopes left, it's just for points. Error. Okay. Are you bugged? I don't know. I, the last the last chat I saw from you, Kerberton, was saying that because I switched before I switched to onslaught. That's the last card. I, that's the last thing I saw coming. From. Serve her who is <laughs> Weird how Kerberton hasn't commented in like ten minutes. <laughs> Dubs is trolling. <laughs> I'll cleave you in two. It just feels different to tell wait to teleport. <clears throat> You mean, you mean Megascope? Do I want to play this Hafru? Like, clicking this is kind of bad for points. I 
I just don't, I don't, I think we're fine either way. I think we don't need to. Let's go, let's just do this. Let's just do the crows. I don't see, I don't see anything wrong with this. I feel like it's Quen. <clears throat> Cause I don't really want to click this card. I don't want to click this because it's going to give him more heals. It's going to give him more heals. What are you gonna do? Huh? I guess it doesn't give him more heals here. But I still don't really want to click this. I have a rhizome, which is just fine. The child, return it to me. And then it's gonna be a Quen last. We just have more points, right? Quen last is like 14. 18. Let's get this over with. Oh. Looking good. It's not for me. Mega scope into crows plays for eight to twelve. Yep, that's right. Lady of the sins, daughter of the heavens. Nice. GG. <laughs> pretty close, actually. This was pretty close. So, was this Kerpatin's version? This is very, very similar to the second version that we built. Except, like, we didn't see Lemons, we didn't see Decoction, we didn't see Axel. 